Hello and welcome to TVC News This Hour. Let's begin from Abuja, where the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has called for a speedy and amicable resolution uh, to the industrial action embarked upon by uh, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, which has entered its third month. He made a call, uh, the appeal rather, in a statement ahead of this year's Workers' Day. Senator Lawal said, quote, Nigerian workers deserve our appreciations and respect for their contributions to the development of our country, end quote. In the spirit of May Day, Senator Lawan wants all efforts exerted to ensure that Nigerian universities reopen for learning and research. As we embarked on the warning strike in February to press home their demands, which includes improved welfare, revitalization of public universities, and academic autonomy. And Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Somolu, has urged the Nigerian workers, especially public and private workers in the state, to remain productive and committed to carrying out their duties. Governor Somolu, in a statement issued by his spokesperson, Bwega Koshile, described workers as the lifeblood of the economy. He commended all the workers in the state for their patience, strength, passion, and commitment to the development of Lagos State and Nigeria as a whole, urging them not to relent in their positive contributions to the economy. Well, we'll move to Kaduna State, where the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, has charged military personnel to ensure the protection of life and property of all Nigerians in the face of increasing security threats. The Defence Minister stated of this in Kaduna at the passing out parade of 49 cadets together with 1,549 recruits at the military training centre. Lupe Assam reports. Senior military officers together with other guests at the parade ground of the military training centre in Kaduna. They are here for the passing out parade of 49 branch commissioned cadets together with at least 1,549 recruit soldiers. Among the soldiers are 368 air women. On arrival, the special guest of honor immediately inspects the cadets and recruits on parade. The nation is currently witnessing threats to our national security by terrorists and other enemies of peace. The guest of honor charges military troops across the country to step up to the challenge and protect all citizens. It is much more than just a job, especially at this crucial time in our nation's history when we are battling the challenges of insecurity from several fronts. As such, you are expected to secure the lives and properties of Nigerian people and ensure that they can live in peace and pursue their legitimate aspirations without fear. Next is a display of unique precision exhibition drills and the march passed in quick and slow time. A demonstration of some of the skills the graduating Air Force personnel have now acquired. With Nigeria currently grappling with an unprecedented wave of different but overlapping security challenges across various corners of the country, the addition of 1,500 troops wouldn't have come at a better time. The military authorities are assuring that enemies of peace will henceforth be given a run for their money. Lupe Asson, TVC News, Kaduna. Here in Lagos, operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have arrested 18 suspected internet fraudsters. In a statement by the EFCC, the suspects were arrested following intelligence reports received by the commission about their alleged involvement in computer-related fraud. The operatives picked them up at Victoria Crest Estate uh, Lekki, 3 in Lekki, where items including cars, laptops, computers, uh, mobile phones, and charms were recovered. The statement also noted that the suspects will be charged to court after investigations are concluded. So other matters now. National leader of the APC and 2023 presidential aspirate has promised to immortalize the legacy of the, the late Alafi of Oyo by creating a monument in his honor, as well as a training and development skills center for the youth. Ashibaju Bola Chidumbu made this promise at the eighth day Fidel of the first class monarch in Oyo State. Olawa Akon reports. 
Few hours after Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu returned to Abuja from Saudi Arabia and presented with his expression of interest and nomination forms of the APC for the 2023 presidential election, he deemed it fit to attend the eight-day fidel of the late Allah Fion for your Islamic clerics, clergymen, traditional rulers and family members of the monarch were happy to see and warmly welcome the former governor of Lagos at the Fidal. <laughs> Ashiwaju Tinubu talked about the exemplary and invaluable attribute of Obala Media Deyemi and the need to immortalize him. A man of immense courage, a man who is forthright, a man who is extremely honest and kind. He is concerned about the unity and stability of Nigeria and particularly the enduring history of the Yoruba race. He says the first class monarch will be greatly missed. We will miss him dearly, but we accept the fact that God loves him most and his memory will live, be with us forever. For the religious leaders and family members, Ashiwaju Tinubu's presence is a great honor. A very distinguished uh, son of Yoruba. For him to be here, it shows that uh, his relationship with KBC, while his father was alive, and also his love for uh, people who were your and Yoruba race in general. We really value that, and that has added to his worth in our midst and in this community. I'm so happy because of the, pres uh, the presence of uh, the, t the Senator Tinobu here in your land. The 2023 presidential aspirant also visited the bereaved wives of the first class monarch who reigned for 51 years. Ashiwaju Bola Tinobu's presence at the Fidao was greeted with an overwhelming solidarity from party faithful, religious leaders, traditional rulers, and the people of Oyo State. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Oyo State. To politics now, lawmaker representing the Tiosa constituency 2 in the Lagos State House of Assembly, Bola Ishao, has restated his commitment to continue to make life better for his people using the instrument of law in the legislature. He said this shortly after picking up his nomination form for the State House of Assembly ahead of the All Progressives Congress primaries. In agreement, they stood with one voice. They have spoken. The people of Etiosa, party faithful, came all out to give their support to Bolaho Ishao, a lawmaker in the Lagos State House of Assembly, as he picked up his nomination form. The Lagos lawmaker had earlier received the support of leaders in the All Progressives Congress within his community. This time, more support is coming at a parley with All Progressives Congress local government areas and ward escrows of Etiosa constituency too, where he gave his account of stewardship before his people. He expressed appreciation for the confidence reposed in him through the years. I just give them uh, an account of my stewardship and they decided that they still want me to go one more time. So I'm happy to serve them, I'm happy to serve my people and as I said in my earlier speech. <laughs> Amidst cheers and celebration, Mr. Isha was endorsed and urged to continue the good work he started years ago. When you are doing good and people feel the goodness in you, I see nothing wrong in them calling you to come back again. You understand? We've been having representation before now, but thank God people are feeling this representation than any other one. Etiosa, everybody loves his job. He's doing well. He's a perfect man. He's the one that can do it. He's touching every life within his constituents. For him, this decision is a call to service and another opportunity to build on what he has started just as a wish the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Ashwa Jubal Ahmed Tinubu, 
success ahead of the primaries. We should be saying why he should run, you understand? Nobody has said anything wrong in him leading the country, and I think it's the best choice for our country, so that we'll move on. Um, all these dreams, 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 he will bring it to reality by God's grace. He is confident that Nigeria will get it right, this time with the right people, in the saddle. Abimola Agibi, TVC News, Lagos. Thanks for staying with us. We're staying with political stories now. Governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, has described the conduct of 2022 local government elections in the state as peaceful, fair, and credible. The governor spoke at LGEA Primary School, Banjiba, Guma local government area, shortly after casting his vote. Maiwa Okwato reports. Local governments and elections are two essential features of modern democracies. They help to establish nurture and sustain democracy and democratic political culture. This day, Benue State conducts its local government elections with political parties expected to participate at the 23 local government councils. Casting his vote is the Benue State Governor. He expresses happiness with the large turnout of people to cast their votes across the state, stressing that having worked hard, the People's Democratic Party should come out victorious. I'm quite optimistic that at the end, my party is going to sweep the polls because we have worked very hard to um, earn the support of Benue people. What you're seeing here, this is just Goma local government, other local government, it is ongoing. And I believe that at the end. He said that despite the invasion of the local government by armed terrorists, which has made more than half of the local government displaced, the massive turnout by voters is a clear indication that the people are conscious of their rights by actively participating. Despite their distress situation, they are here in their number to vote. And so when chairmen have voted, when councillors have voted, they should know that these are the people who made it possible. Voters also share their votes and experience. Um, so far, so good. As you can see, it's quite very free, fair, transparent, and very credible. The presiding officers were able to situate our names very quick, um, within split seconds. and. Uh, it's the, the process was as smooth as anything can say. Uh, you see, e initially people were a little bit skeptical of coming out to vote. But the, with the number of security around all over the council ward, people are free going about voting the, 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 the candidate of their choice. The governor had, before casting his vote, visited to internally displaced persons camp in Bajimba, where he provided them with food items and cash. Governor Tom, while addressing the internally displaced persons, enjoined them to remain peaceful and exercise patience as government is working hard to end the Fulani invasion, which has kept them away from their ancestral homes. Mayowa Okanto, TVC News, Bajimba. To Delta State, where the state government has provided relief materials for more than 30 victims of a multiple vehicle accident, which killed two persons and burnt more than 20 buildings. The incident occurred at Aurora Junction along East West Road in Uweri, Uheli North local government area of the state. Ikena Michi reports. Three. The accident, which involved three articulated vehicles, caused the death of two people and burnt several buildings, rendering many homeless and destroying their businesses. Governor Okoa's visits to the scene of the incident demonstrated his concern and promised to support victims. Today, three months after, the governor is making good his promise as he hands cash to victims of the unfortunate incident, urging them to utilize it well. To tell you that we have a governor that is always concerned about the citizen of the state and beyond, it is not just to say it because press was there. He said it and he match his word with action. It's the action that we are here to, to implement today. Whatever you receive today will be government's way of showing concern to your plight. So that because the governor, as you know him, 
uh, of our noble smart data is able and always very sympathetic with any data that is affected with any form of disaster or anything at all. Rosalind is a widow whose building where she uses for her petty trading was gutted by the inferno resulting from the accident. She, like others here, could not hide their gratitude. And they do market, but no way to do the market again. I make me with the colors, I make call here. This one with the gimmicks. I agree that they build your house. You see my husband, I don't know where he's back. I do it my own like that. They suffer six, but the government, don't save me now. Thank you for government. So, uh, I wish uh, if our governors are doing the way our government just do now, please, all states will be more very, okay, I'm very happy. So, and they will pray that uh, God should give him more strength and more higher position to continue a uh, good leadership. These are not all victims affected by the incident. Some did not come thinking the gesture from the government is too good to be true. As commendable as this intervention by the government is, it is important for road users to apply optimum caution and discipline to reduce the rate of accidents on the highway. Ikenna Amechi, TVC News, Asaba. The federal government has assured that all genetically modified food that have been certified so far are safe for human consumption. The National Biosafety Management Agency stated this assurance during a sensitization workshop in Port Harcourt on the ongoing efforts to expand the use of biotechnology in the country. Senior correspondent Uchi Okoro reports. Genetically modified organisms are plants or animals whose genetic makeup have been altered by the addition, removal or silencing of a gene for better performance. It is through this process that genetically modified food is produced. This innovation has not received the desired public acceptance due to safety concerns. But National Biosafety Management Agency insists that no genetically modified food will be allowed into Nigerian markets unless they are confirmed safe. This is the message to stakeholders cutting across the media, academia, the state government, yes. law enforcement agencies and professional bodies. Whatever motive anybody has, but I know that there is a trade war going on between agrochemical companies and biotech industry. We don't want to be involved in that. All we want to let the members of the public know is that all genetically modified organisms that will ever be released in this country, safety is assured. The use of genetically modified organisms targets higher yield, pest and insect resistant food crops and environmental protection. Apart from the fact that it solves the specific problems associated with them, it will also enhance the economy. For instance, if the farmers can have a bumper harvest, they can use it, reduce the use of chemicals, I tell you, the cost of, on chemicals will be removed, cost on chemicals will be removed, and also the impact of chemicals on human health will also be eliminated. And the impact of, uh, of chemicals on the environment, particularly in the area of uh, greenhouse gases, will also be reduced. So there are multiple benefits. Despite the advantages of embracing the products of modern biotechnology, protecting the health of consumers from any adverse effects still remains a major concern. If there is an alteration to this and we and it is found out that it is not good enough for human consumption consumption and then there are people who you know do not apply due diligence due process in verifying this it gets to the consumer that is where our problem is our, our problem might be so far, the National Biosafety Management Agency has approved three products for commercialization in Nigeria. They are genetically modified beans, corn, and cotton. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Harcourt. One of the ways to reduce disputes between landlords and tenants is for both sides to understand and exercise their rights and duties as spelled out under the laws. Kemi Folade Amos sought legal opinions on this. Lawyers versed in real estate say disputes between landlords and tenants usually arise from ignorance of their rights and duties. 
You must know that your landlord cannot evict you without going through a due process. Your landlord cannot wake up and, and increase rent arbitrarily without giving you sufficient notice. You understand? I've seen situations where the landlord wakes up at the end of the subsisting rent and the next month he says your rent is hereby increased from 500 to 1 million. Okay? I've seen situations where a landlord will say, I'm giving you one month to move out. No. As a tenant, the landlord owes you that duty to serve you the, the, the necessary uh, notices before you are evicted from the property. Once you take the tenant to court, there's evidence that the writ of someone has been served, whether personally or through uh, subsistence, that, that tenant is deemed to have been given that notice. Do you understand? So now, some tenants will go ahead and renovate the premises of uh, a property belonging to a landlord. It's not your property. Practitioners at this gathering also call for due diligence by the public before entering into real estate investments as well as better funding in the sector. I think a major problem is um, a lack of um, a code of ethics that is amongst practitioners. Um, of course, lawyers have their code of, code of ethics, but um, even lawyers need to have um, even far better regulation, um, active regulation, and there are other participants in the real estate sector. If you are between the ages of 21 years and 60 years, and you are not involved in real estate, and I want to say real estate, my own kind of real estate is real estate network marketing, part-time or full-time, you are cheating yourself. So if you must evolve in real estate from 21 years to 60 years, you must be well entwined with the practice of doing due diligence before you buy or invest or partner with any company in any real estate investment. Kemi Foladiemo, TVC News, Lagos. And now to the holidays. Now, the Sultan of Sakoto Saad Abu Bakar III has declared Monday, 2nd of May, as the first day of Shawal 1443 AH. The Sultan May, via declaration in a statement signed by Professor Sambo Junaidu, the Chairman, Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council Sakoto. He noted that the Sultanate Council Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, in conjunction with the National Moon Sighting Committee, did not receive any report from various moon sighting committees across the country. He felicitated with Muslims and urged them to continue to pray for peace, progress and development of the country. And that's a wrap this hour. Thank you very much for watching.